Discussing the subject of Sri Radha Ramanjari's based on Ravara Sudhaniti by Prabhupada and other Saraswati and the commentaries of Sri Anathadas Prabhupada Maharaj. This is verse 125. I think we did that yesterday. No, we didn't do this. <coughs> Raka Chandra Varaka Yalapam Rasananda Kadanandas Tatadrik Chandrikaya Abhikamabhikan Kana Matra Kasya Kasyanu Bhuta Bhuta P. Yes, Shonadara. She Vidrita Navasula Madhuri Sarasindu. I think it's the last. Madhuri Sarasindu. Navasula Madhuri Sarasindu. She wrote a comment a little more, I think. You hear it? Okay. She wrote a comment about Vada Vidura Madhupati Pranada Priyatamna. Translation. Of course, this is the glorification of Radharani and begging to get Radharani's pleased with the manjari. May Sri Radha, who gives life to Madhupati, who is a very, who is very distressed when some obstacle appears to the fulfillment of his desires. Radharani's incomparable moonlike face is a source of delicious transcendental bliss. Radharani's face makes the full moon seem insignificant because his nectarine rays do not even give one atomic drop of the ambrosial effulgence of Radharani's moonlike face and whose red lips carry the ocean, this is right around on his lips, the red lips carry an ocean of fresh nectar, that's the essence of sweetness. That's Navasuddha Madhuri Sara Sindhu. Five Sanskrit words to describe right on his lips. They're full of nectar suda, they're fresh nava, or sweetness, the essence of sweetness and nectar and an ocean. That's a beautiful description, a new elaboration of Rarani's transcendental divine Adara, Adara lives. I like the word for word, appreciate the poet's choice of words. Raka Chandra means full moon, Ra Raka Chandra, because he's a protector of the night. The moon is protector of the night, so he's called the Raki, Raka Chandra. Varaka, so means insignificant. That full moon is insignificant and can't compare with the Rasa, Nanda, Kanda, Anana. Rasa, Nanda, Rasa, Nan, Kan, Rasa, Nan, Kanda, Anana. Hindu, the moon of Rarani, the Hindu, the moon of Rarani's face is a source of incomparable Anupam Rasananda, incomparable tasty bliss. Chandrikaya, and so now back to comparison, comparing Rarani's face to the moonbeams. Chandrika, Chandrikaya, 
A moonbeam is not even a kind of, kind of mantra. A moonbeam, only one drop of Ramay's face, the potions, atomic drop, Anu, Anuta, can't compare with. So he makes an elaborate comparison between Ramay's lips, I mean, excuse me, Ramay's face and the full moon. The full moon is full of nectar. The nectar is very life giving and soothing. But that, all that nectar of the whole full moon, Raka Chandra, is like a, a, a bindu, it's like a drop of nectar compared to the, the uh, Indu, Ananda Hindu, the moon of Rarani's face. That's amazing. Now he describes Rarani's lips. Sona Adara Sri Vijita. The, the lips or lips Adara. Or sona means red, and they're very beautiful, they full of nectar. Then he describes, this is all about Rarani's lips. Sona Dara, that whole line, the third pada of this shloka describes the lips of Rarani. So, so, Sri Vijitya Navasuda Madhuri. So Adar Adar Sri Vijita Navasuda Madhuri Sarasindu. The essence of an ocean of sweet nectar. For whom? For Krishna. Come on, Jack. We worship Radha and Krishna, right? If you're talking about Radharani, the Krishna must be in there also. This whole book is Radha and Krishna, you go every verse. There's not one verse where we don't find Radha and Krishna. 272 verses, the most 270 are basically about Radha and Krishna. And their sweet exchanges and their sweet forms. So the Madri prays for Priyatam, Radha and I be pleased with me. So a very significant phrase that he describes Krishna Saraswati Pad describes Krishna's verse as Marupati Pranada. Pranada means one who gives life. One who gives very prana. So who gives the life to Marupati? Marupati means the king of the bees. The bee king. King of the bees. Pati means king. Master. Ruler. So the king of the Sweetness, queen, king of honey is a bee, but he doesn't have honey in himself. He has to seek honey elsewhere. And seek honey from flowers like lotus flowers, like golden lotus flowers. So the, the golden lotus flower around his face, and the honey is found in the center of the lotus flower, not in the petals, it's in the center. So the center of Radharani's face on her lips is where the bee finds honey. So he has to go there to get it. So Radharani is the Madhapati <coughs> Prana, the bees, the life of Prana of a bee is honey, Madhu, Shad. So without that honey, the bee dies, doesn't live. So Krishna's a big bee, so without lots of honey, <laughs> he dies. So he has. 16,108 beehives, <laughs> which he drinks honey from every night. <laughs> That's a pretty drunken bee. You drink all the honey because you, know, you get pretty, pretty overdosed. You know? So he's Manupati. Radharani is the one that's giving life to that bee. As the honey gives life to the bumblebee, honeybee, Manupati Sham, gives life to the bumblebee of Krishna. Manapati prana da, she gives her prana. So this is a word for word meaning, which is interesting, because the verse is all about the beauty of Radharani and her effect on Krishna, and, and defeating that beauty of the full moon, and her lips are sweeter than a thousand honey, honey, hive, honey bee hives. <laughs> And, but then the purport takes the flight, <laughs> it goes in a whole different direction. Paul Leela goes for f four pages 
about kidnapping. Krishna gets kidnapped, they, he gets free, he comes to meet, he gets kidnapped by Vipaksha Saki, he gets free and meets Rarani. Rarani is not too favorable, she's a man. And then she, she does, she speaks, she ignores Krishna and tells him to get lost. Then she enters, she enters different bhavas. So the whole purpose is about this leela. So let's get started. It starts out with Chandali kidnapping Krishna. So kidnapping girls in India is an old pastime. It's a big thing in India nowadays. People kidnap girls and make them slaves in Muslim countries and European countries. Slaves of a particular chakra. In his kinkri form, the mantri is accompanying Ravarani when she goes out and Abhisar to meet Krishna. Meanwhile, Shama Siddhar is on his way to the Kunja for Abhisar Milan. He meets Chandravi and her Sakis Pavan Shaivya. Chandali was hiding between the vines and trees. <laughs> That's what the thieves do, they hide in the forest. So he comes unknowingly in the forest, they shring out and catch them. So Chandali is waiting to hear the jingling of her prey. The jingling of Krishna's ankle wells. When he came in close to her, she came out of hiding and grabbed, came out of hiding and grabbed Krishna's hand. Then she quoted, then she spoke a verse from Chandi Das. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. <laughs> Chandi Das a few hundred years ago, and Radharani was before that. But anyway, she came out and said this to Krishna, which is a song from Chandi Das. This is Chandravi speaking to Krishna. Oh, Sham, you came walking down this path so nicely. I heard the jingling of your ankle bells. Nupur, Nupur, Dwani, Shuni. Nupur, Dwani, Shuni. I heard the jingling of your ankle bells. I was desperate about your going to meet with Radharani. I felt deprived. Bandhu, hey. Oh, friend, I won't let you go. <laughs> That's tough one to deal with. Chandrawi gets a hold of your hand. Because Chandrawi is also a short name for Chandi. The short name is Chandi. Chandi is a ferocious, powerful form of Durga. So Chandrawi, to capture Krishna, is showing the Chandi aspect or Avali, the Durga aspect. I won't let you go. I'll keep you in my heart, and thus I can always see you. So then Chandravi orders her Sakis, Oh Sakis, carefully take Sham to my Kunja. Tonight we will deprive the beautiful Radhika of Nagara's association. So let's see the evil intent of the rival Saki. This is how rivals think. <laughs> Pretty dangerous thinking <laughs> for Krishna at least. And He's going to be in a lot of trouble pretty soon. After Chandravi speaks this, the Sakis take Krishna by the hand and bring him, bring him to her kunja. Chandiya sings, Hari is shivering out of fear of Radharani. He had a point with Radharani and he stood her up. And he's uh, aptly afraid. So that's what's going on with Chandravi and, Ra and Krishna and one kunja. Now there's a <coughs> camera switches to another kunja, camera number two. In this kunja we focus on Radharani. She spent the whole night in great distress until sunrise. What happened at sunrise? There was the eclipse. Grahan, you know Grahan? Solar eclipse. Because that's when Krishna came. 
It became night. When Krishna came, it was supposed to be sunrise. It became night for Radharani. He finally showed up in the morning with the signs of Chandalis. <coughs> Love making on his body. And Radharani adopted the mood of Kandi. Kandi means broken mind, broken heart. Angry also. Who's in the mind defines Kandi hero, heroine, Kandi Nayaka? Lover. I mean, beloved. Ron. When Krishna shows up late for the meeting and wearing the marks of another girl's enjoyment on his body, the beloved Ravani assumes the mood of Kandi. What? Kandi? Otherwise, we don't hear the T at the end. Kandita. Yeah, yeah, it's a long yeah, yeah. Kandita. I'm just, I, uh, in India, many uh, people talk to me, but they say Kandi. Oh. Well, they, Arjun. Arjuna. Uh, so, Kandi, but it's just a dial and a T. But it has a long A, so Kandita. Okay, fine. Thank you. Rarai, I mean, well, Rarai breathes deeply in and out of anger and becomes silent. Shivati then sarcastically welcomes her Nagar. This is a bhajan by Gopal Das. So Rarai is speaking Bengali bhajan. <laughs> Interesting idea. <laughs> she, uh, Krishna can speak the language of every living entity. The Sarvabhashavit is one of the 64 qualities of Krishna. Sarvabhashavit, he can speak to buffaloes and cows and davises and deities, everyone. So, Ra, so Rarani can speak to everyone. So she can speak Bengali, Hindi, French Rasa, apparently. Uh, maybe she said this same idea, obviously, in Brajvasa. So Krishna shows up late with the signs of love making a Chandravi on his body. Radharani is Kandita Bhav, very broken hearted, unhappy, and frustrated. So she sarcastically welcomes Nagar. It's said in English, sarcasm is the lowest form of humor. Sarcasm is a type of humor not really appreciated. So here's what Rarai sarcastically said. Oh, you have come this morning. Oh, my friend, oh, my bandu, oh, ba Ari Bandu. This, will be very, this day will be very auspicious for me. I see your face with a cousin on your lips and a lipstick on your cheeks, and that is very auspicious. It's like seeing a cow, a baby cow taking milk from a mother cow, or a milkman walking by with a full bucket of milk, or seeing a mongoose. These are all mongola dristi, auspicious things to see in the morning, especially when you begin a journey. So I, this, I, my day is gonna be really good today. It's, what, what, why is your face all dried up? Who has decorated you like this? Seeing you like this makes you feel very dooky, unhappy. There are any continues. All glories to you. Bhadu Tomahari Bolihari Jai. All glories, Bolihari, Bolihari Jai. All glories to you, my Bandhu. Tamara Bandhu, my Bandhu. Turn around, because Krishna's not, has his back turned around. He's totally embarrassed, totally doesn't, doesn't want to, he can't show his face in front of Radharani. Because his face has all kinds of <laughs> obvious symptoms of another lover. So Rai says, turn, turn around, <laughs> so I can see your moon-like face, with all those spots on it, with all those spots on your moon, on your face, they're caused by black cudgel and, 
and your lips, and you kiss in your eyes, you know, they go away, and it caused by your lips, so you all those red and black spots over your face. And you don't want, you gotta put a lot of makeup on when you're gonna go out, outside with that kind of scene. <laughs> so you don't have any makeup on. <laughs> you as it is, Krishna as he is. Turn around so you see your mood like face. Alas, who has beautified your, eye, your face with eyeliner? On your lips. <laughs> That's unspoken. <laughs> the beauty of that spot of vermilion enchants the mind to be the greatest sages. I see your body is bruised by the scratches of sharp nails and the bites of sharp teeth. There is a distinct mark of a bangle on your chest. How's a bangle get on your chest? <laughs> Some lady sleep on your chest. <laughs> Some lady <laughs> fell asleep on your chest and her bangles pressed against your chest and they an imprint there. Pretty go in the Gopal Das is giving pretty minute description. Have you spent the whole night as a, disguised as a woman, although you're a man? I see you're covered in a blue sari. <laughs> in other words, Krishna ran out Chandoli's kun. He took her dough butter with him. <laughs> he left his yellow cheddar and took her blue do, her nila pata, her blue dough butter, and put it around his shoulder and he didn't realize it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he came from around because he has a yellow, he has a pitambra dhoti, pitambra chatter. I see, although you're a man, you're wearing a sari. Very nice. <laughs> this beautifully colored red foot like looks so nice on your chest. Makes a nice purple color on your chest. Red and blue makes purple. Now tell me frankly, why have you come here? Nagar, Nagar looks in four directions. <laughs> oh, uh, well, yeah. Covering his face with a scarf. All, and Govindada all says, although Sham tries to wash off his fame, his shame, tries to wash off his shame, he is, can't do it. He can't remove it. What happens then? <laughs> Radharai becomes very angry. And Nagar tries everything to please her and calm her down, but to no avail. Finally, he breaks down crying. Seeing that all his hopes are frustrated. That's just old standard technique. <laughs> Usually women, that's their secret weapon, you know. But men also cry. If you know, Krishna's a big wife. He's <laughs> Bhagavan. Puranatam Bhagavan. Aishwarya Swagrasya. Well, he's crying like a little baby. Got his candy taken away. I <laughs> breaks down and cried. Shivati covers her lower head with her veil and starts crying softly. Then one second comes in and tells Rarani, Rarani, you don't have to cry and cover your head anymore. Sham has also left crying. I don't think he's going to come back anymore, so you better calm down and go home. As soon as Rarani hears, Krishna has gone, is gone, he won't come back. She becomes startled and feeling sorry. She enters a Nayaka, Nayaka Bhav called Kala Hantarita. So just see all the Bhavas that have been displayed. I'll be sorry, Kabab, going on love journey, love trials, and then um, less eccentric, intense being, getting prepared, excited to meet him. Uh, Utkanti Kabab. Then Krishna stands her up, and then she, then she enters Kandita Bhav, and then he comes back, 
before she can get big Lumba Bob and get too angry. So if she doesn't get to that stage. Before she gets hot and really angry, Vibra Lumba, Vibra Lumba, Lumba Bob, then she he comes out and tries to patch everything up. And then she just rejects him and eject, he rejects him and ejects him. And then she enters in the Kala Antrita Bob. Kala means quarrel and Antrita means after. Remorse and Remorse and regret after quarreling. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so that's right. Right to say four Nayaka Bhavas and one small Lila. There's eight total. They're described usually on money. Chatter four of them. So. <coughs> The Shaggy said he's Krishna's God, he won't come back. So now Rarani anxiously says, Sikhi, what are you saying? Shama's gone? You foolish girl? I was not really angry with him. This now Rarani does surveil and starts talking to Sikhi. I wasn't really angry. Why did you let him go? Quickly go bring him back. Otherwise I cannot live anymore. The second replies, Radharani, I don't think you'll find Krishna anymore. He was crying so much at your lotus feet like a great offender, but still you remain angry with him. Now who knows where he has gone, feeling miserable, offended, and agitated. Even if we search for Krishna now, where will we find him? This is a tragic moment in the Leela drama. So how do you feel now you're a manjri and watching all this? What are your feelings? How are you, how are you relating to Radharani? Are you relating to Krishna or Radharani? Are you feeling sympathetic for Krishna or angry at Krishna? <laughs> Or you basically will follow Rarani's mood. She was angry, you were angry. Now she kind of forgave him and <coughs> lamenting, so you're also forgiving him and lamenting. That's how it works. So Bob let me in. Here is Seki's words of Krishna's no chance of Krishna returning. She went to Kansuri Ajite and said, Oh Seki, what did I do? I threw away the jewel from my own from my own cloth. You were right here. Couldn't you stop me from doing so, all these foolish things? Oh, I've lost the treasure of my, of my life. <coughs> Seeing this, Rodney strikes her head and her breast with her hands and laments, Alas, now my lover is wandering in the forest, afflicted by Cupid's arrows. Why didn't I heed his humble pleas? This is the nature of pure love. Beloved does not see the lover's faults and cannot, be, and cannot become really, brackets, angry with him. Rather, she thinks it is a fault of her own. If she becomes angry with her faulty lover, she thinks it's her fault. She cannot find consolation with her suckies because they return the fall to her saying, Sundari, we told you not to reject Khanum. Now you're, now you're crying streams of hot tears that were caused by your own indifference. So these are Manjuri's speaking. These are Lita Vishaka, the heavyweights. <laughs> They're not so sympathetic. That I'm saying that right now the Leela, Leela Ross is stalled. The Leela Ross is neutral. It's five years, you're neutral, not going forward. Rana can't, it's not with Krishna, Krishna, not with Radha, Rani. So where is it, Rasa? No Rasa in that. So now, how does the Mandri serve Radha at this time? What does she do? They bring Krishna. Tries. Yeah. The Manjuri feels sorry for Swami 
and she goes out to find Shama Sundari. After a long search, Manji finds Sham on the bank of the Yamuna, colored gray with the dust of frustrated desires and totally morose because of his separation from Radhika. Covered by the dust of frustrated desires. That's interesting. Interesting way to describe frustration. <laughs> yeah, you would think externally, logically, he Krishna was rolling on the banks of Yamuna in the Brajaduli against self car with dust. But that is what it said. It says what it said. He was grieved by the dust, not by Brajaduli, by frustrated desires. His desires were like a fire. So when a fresh when a fire burns, all the wood gets com consumed. When the fire the wood of the fire is consumed, what is left? Gray ashes. Gray ashes. So the fire the fire of desire, when it gets consumed and doesn't get fulfilled, it turns into ashes which cover your heart and mind. That's what Anantas Bhavati explained to me. That's what he revealed to me by meditating on this. Grave by the dust of frustrated desires. Interesting meditation and revelation. And totally morose because of separation from Radhika. <coughs> Although his name, Madhupati, suggests he's a blissful Rasik bee, but still he's found to be unhappy here. How is that possible? These commentaries are fantastic. But I'll go into the richness and depth of these commentaries. Krishna thrives on love. Loving, praying seva rendered to him by Manan Mahabhav personified Radharani. Mahabhav Srupini Radharani. If Krishna doesn't get that Mahabhav, his life airs will come out of his throat and will start to choke. Seeing the stress of Nagar, the Manjri keeps throwing his honor fully intact. <coughs> and he's Raman, her respect, her dignity, her honor, and takes Krishna back to Rukun, saying, telling, Manjri gives an order to Krishna, Manjri Agya. Yes, yes, sir, Manjari. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Dasiji. <laughs> Listen, Sean, when you come in the Kunj, you have to, you have to hold her on his feet, fall her feet, and hold her feet and beg for forgiveness. Because that's how you get free from an apparat, Sadhananda. <laughs> You make sound and then you have to fall to feet of the Vaishnava, Vaishnavi, hold her feet, or your head at her feet, and looking and down there while you're looking up, say, please forgive me for my apparatus. I beg you to forgive me. So now it describes there's another bhajan. This Bengali world is the world of bhajans. There's this Bengali songbook called Padakopa True, it's like five inches thick. It's like this thick, it's like this book. It's like even that, this, this Ujjalina Mani, big fat paper. I would have put it on Bible paper and make it thin and manageable. Anyway, uh, production. It's too crazy. You draw the book and you fall asleep, you'll die. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think my book's much lighter. It's a lot of paper, that's a lot of weight. Anyway, that's, that's another issue. So, this is a bhajan that describes this idea of how Krishna meets Radharani. When Krishna hears the mantri's words, he comes along with the mantri. Seeing the best of lady loves Rarani from afar, he lowers his head in humility. Kana, Ka, Khan, I mean, it's Krishna, 
folds his hands and says with tearful eyes and aching heart, I am your servant. I have fallen at your feet. Please give up your cruel man, unfavorable mood. Seeing Sean's anxiety, Suda, Suda Muki, Rani, stares at Krishna's face, holds his sprout-like hands, and speaks broken words to him. Or she's stuttering because of ecstasy, anger, accept, accept rejection, acceptance, all the different emotions mixed together so she, she can't, she speaks broken words, she can't speak clearly. It's a bhajana by Yadonanda Das. So Yadonanda concludes his bhajana by saying, it looks as if the moon has broken out of the clouds where it was hidden. So the moon is Radhika's love for Krishna, Prem Hindu. The moon is Radhika's love for Krishna. It broke out from the cloud, the cloud covering the, the dark clouds covering that moon, Radhika's mind. That is the poets, that's what poets do. <laughs> they make all kinds of metaphors and analyses to increase the rush. So now there's some description because it's in the, the verse of that line, so Ananda's comments, the moon, the regular moon in the sky compared to the moon of Rowan's face. Anyway, the Shana Rock her face mother mother and all that. Thus Radharani gives up her mind, and her moon like face shines with a bright smile, and her red lips resemble an ocean this is this is what is said in Sanskrit. Rarani, at this time Radharani's red lips resemble an ocean filled with nectar, Sudha Sudaniti. Yes, it's a fresh nectar and sweetness, Nava Madhurya. When a Chakura bird drinks the nectar of the moon, it will be revived. <coughs> so the maid servant understands that Srimati can provide this elixir to Sham Chakura. Sham Chakura is a Krishna that drinks the nectar of the moon of Radhani's face, and nectar is concentrated. Tastiest nectar is in her lips. Adara Madhura, Adara Madhura. Rara, the Manji thinks, how can poets compare Raghu's moonlike face with the shining of the material moon? Nothing can compare to Radha's face. The nectarine, foam, nectarine moon rays can you equal even one atomic drop of the aura of Rarani's face. This sweet nectarian moon saves the life of Madhupati, whereas the material moon only increases his lusty affliction. <laughs> so a different effect, they both have different pravav. There's Chandra pravav and Chandra Mukhi Rarani pravav. So one pravav increases lust, and the other Prabhupada of Chandramukhi Rarani puts out the lust, satisfies the lust. So may that Rarani save our lives also. <laughs> as as Rarani is, is a Madhupati Pranada, Madhupati Pranada, he saves, she gives and saves the life of Madhupati Sham. She saves, she saves the life of the Mandri. It says Priyatam, Priyatam doesn't really mean save, Priyatam means to please, to give pleasure to. As many means, one is, of course, means dear and all that, but means someone who's dear is also very pleasing. So Priyatam, Priya means pleasing also. Like it says, it says about the uh, coward boys were able to enjoy Krishna 
uh, because of the Krita Punya Punja, it heaves the mounds of Punya. But the word Punya there doesn't mean pious activity, traditional activity. It means beautiful. Punya means beautiful, means they perform beautiful seva. Because how they attain Krishna association? Who were they that got it? Because they're sadhana sadhana devotees in Sakirati. They worship Krishna the coward voice in Sakirati. And they attain perfection. When Krishna has a prakat lila, they enter the lila. So the Bhagavatam is describing their fortune. It's Krita Punya Punja. Jiva Goswami comments, it doesn't mean karma or good, good karma, dharma karma. It doesn't mean that kind of activities. Don, tapa, it means pure, Punya means beautiful activities, beautiful, pleasing activities of bhakti. So that's what a sark has to do. As you bhakti, nothing else will, will enable you to attain Krishna. So uh, that's verse 125. I'll read another translation. Go on to another verse. That was a nice experience for a beautiful Leela. Had a tragic start and a happy ending. That's Madhuram Samapaya. That's the law of Sanskrit drama. I would keep it in. It has to end on a sweet note. Madhuram Samapaya. There's no such thing as a sad ending in Natya Shastra and drama. So oh, this is uh, 120, 120, that was 126. What was that? 125. There's another translation. Uh, the title of this verse, Moonface Radharani, is a source of Madhupati's life, Pran. We say phrases like that in mundane relationships of men, women, love, people. It's a very common line to woo someone. I can't live without you. You're my everything. Please marry me. Oh, think about it. <laughs> Let me think about that. I don't believe you. <laughs> You have said that to 10,000 women in the last, <laughs> last 10 years. <laughs> but in other words, the idea is being conveyed there that without your love I can't live. So she's smart, she'll say, how old are you? You're 35. How do you live for 35 years before you met me? <laughs> you say, I can't live without me. You can't live without me. Uh, what, you live 35 years without me? So I stay with you today and leave next year, you'll still live. So you're lying, but anyway, I love you, I'll accept you. <laughs> we love is based on lies anyway. <laughs> but you think, of, think about it. Think deep of what I said. But your love is based on lies. Uh, that's, a, that's a pinching one. Only philosophers can find it answer what that means. There's a translation, making the full moon seem insignificant if compared to that matchless fountainhead of rasa bliss. Even an atomic speck of a single effulgent ray emanating from Rarani's glorious moon face. That's really poetic. A lot of adjectives there. That's why Waitada says that Dasra Sutta is, is a modern contemporary <laughs> in English language. He, he, ex, what do you call the name? Uh, expletives, no. Exaggerated, excessive use of adjectives and description. That comes out pretty good, I think. Brownie's reddish lips, sublime grandeur, issued forth an essential ocean of ever fresh, 
ever fresh nectar of candy syrup. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's, that's the guy that's really in love with some girl. Well, it's a girl. Sagi Ba describing Radharani, Yishri Radharani, Shalani Srimati. Wow, we. The reddish lips issue for the essential ocean of ever fresh nectar of candy syrup. <laughs> Sounds pretty irresistible. <laughs> that that rada, capital T H E, that rada, the bestower of the very life force of Madhupati, the Lord of Sweetness, is always agitated by obstacles, hindering his own. <laughs> is always agitated by obstacles hindering his own desire and enjoyment. <coughs> now may Rara be pleased with us. <laughs> Chris, Chris is agitated by obstacles which he creates himself. <laughs> Man is the architect of his own misfortune. They say destiny, but in Krishna's case, he the architect of his own, <laughs> <laughs> own misfortune. He can't control his senses. He has to study Upanishadamrita. So long, keep going. Don't stop now. So I hope. Thank you. Guru Goswami Padaki. So that was 126. And now it's 127. Going on. Sense, sense, read the verse. Oh. It's the meter. The chanda is called Shrug, Shrug Dara Chandas, which is like Vandeham, Shigaro, Shirta, Bhagavan. That's called the meter. Chandas. Chandas means a poetic meter. Every verse has different meter. I don't know. I don't remember how Vandeham, I don't ever say that these days. Kalini Kula Kama Juma Tala Nilaya Prasulas Pralosat Kali Kanda Vrindasavyam Sadeva Prakatara Raho, Bali Baba Bhavya, Bhaktanam Ritsaroji Madhura Rasa, Sudha Sandhi Padaravinda, Sandranan Akriti Naspuratu Nava Nava Prema Dakshmir Amanda. Translation. May the ever youth, ever young form a Prem Lakshmi Rarani, who is always visible in the abode at the foot of a desire tree on the bank of the Yamuna. This is Krishna rather. No. No, it's Rarani. It says, the excellent goddess of fortune is taking love. May Prem Lakshmi Rarani, who is always visible at the foot of the desire tree on Yamuna Tata, who is the source of blissful of all blissful pastimes, who is lovingly meditated upon through the mood of Krishna's secret lovers, Gobis of Vrindavan, who is those feet pour sweet or erotic nectar on the devotees. Nectar rots on the devotee's lotus like heart, who is the very form of bliss we manifest to us. So he's praying that Madri, Madri Sarka in, is in Sarka Rup as a Sarka, is glorifying Radharani's uh, qualities and her form and her leelas here in indirect ways. He's praying for sport here, all right. A direct vision. Sport means manifestation. Vision is so real. It's so real it seems you can touch 
that vision, but you can't feel it. It's not Sarsha Darshan. There's swarthy and Viswarthi. Become more realistic and more realistic. You feel like you're seeing directly Radha and Krishna. Then we can see them and touch them and they, they speak to you and Krishna holds your hand or kisses your forehead or this. Depending on your sairati, that's called Saksha Darsha. A word for word meaning. Kalindi Kula. Kalindi Kula means bank, bank of your mind. Kamajruma Tala Nilaya. Nilaya means, uh, like we say, Bojan Laya. Laya means a place, a place, a boat, a boat of eating. So Nilaya Kavajruma, a wish fulfilling desire tree on the banks of the Yamuna. Prolasad Kali Kanda. Radharani is Prolasad means bliss. She's a source of Prolasad Kali. Prolasad Kali Kanda, the source of blissful pastime. In Vrindavan, Vrindatavi, Vrindatavi, Sadeva, always. So no Rarani, there's no Madhuri Lila, Madhuri Lila. So this Rarani is manifest there in Vrindavan. Bhavi Baba Bhavya. Bhavi means Gobi's. Bhavi means mood. I meditate on those moods. The Bhaktas. Bhava is a very interesting way of describing meditation. What kind of meditation are you doing? I'm doing Bhavi Bhava Bhavya <laughs> Dhyanam. I'm meditating on the Bhavas or the Bhavis. Raja Bhavis. Then it says Bhaktan and the Bhaktas are doing that, meditating like that. Bhavi Bhav. Rit Saroji Madhuras Sutta. Rit means heart, Saroji, the lotus. Saroji means lotus or heart. The lotus around his heart is Madhurasa Sutta. Madhurasa Sutta. Sandy. Sandy means streaming. Our lotus roar is streaming, dripping with sweet ras, nectar of sweet ras. That's a nice heart. That's one of the symptoms of prema, of, of bhava, prema is the heart melts. Heart melts a little, it melts with so much sweetness of qualities and feelings and emotions. Because uh, our hearts are a little hard, a little hardened by conditioning and so many different frustrations and problems. We say hard hearted. So, Padaravinda Sandra Nanda Kirti says, uh, Anand, Sandra means deep, concentrate, Anand means bliss. Akriti, Akriti means drawing of form. A deep concentrated bliss. May may she be ever manifest to me. Prem Lakshmi. That's the Sanskrit. <coughs> so now the commentary is describing Anas Babaji as a prayer of course begging for a sporty, that's one aspect of the prayer. But he's he's begging, begging for a sporty, a specific type of sporty. He wants to see not Rarani and Kunja, or maybe a Kunja, but not Rarani in Barsan or Yavad or somewhere, or Rasa Sai. wants to see her on the banks of the moon at the foot of a desire tree. So let's read what. So in this commentary, Nada Spavati describes the glories of Radha Krishna's brain. The wonderful transcendental subject. A Radhika's Prem Ras cannot be described in with words. And if it could be, it would not be understood by worldly persons who do not perform sadhana. When Srimad, when Srimad Saraswati Pad writes down these words glorifying Radhika, 
right? A loving service. Even the syllables he uses carry some wonderful power of Chamatkar, astonishment in them. A person who develops a proper faith in this subject will be able to relish it according to the level of their personal purity. Shudanta Karan. The foot of a desire tree in a sweet kunja on the bank of the Muna. Okay, so I say kunja, kunja, desire tree kunja on the bank of the Muna. It's a very suitable place for the adulterous gobies to meet their paramour. Sometimes Krishna comes to meet them there in the daytime and personally makes a flower bed for Radharani. So I know. Maybe somebody needs some help also. Staring down the path, eagerly waiting for the gobies to come. So now Krishna's become Utkanti to Bhav. He's very eager, he's full of Utkanta means Ud, Ud means up and the economy is neck, you stand your neck up. When you're eager, you don't go like this. When you're really eager, you're eager, like your neck goes up. So that's why it's called Utkanta. The eagerness of your heart is to make your body become, express eagerness, extend neck. And you see squirrels playing in the yard. They, they're playing and they want to see something from a distance. They sit on their back legs like this and look up. Who's that? <laughs> Looks so funny. So they extend their bodies on their backs. They don't usually crawl on four legs. They sit on two legs. Who's that coming? <laughs> Looks so funny. I have so scars though, sorry. Look at the scars. They're my family members. <laughs> Some of you have rats and goats and stuff, but I have squirrels and parrots over here. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> what is that? Okay, it's like Christian waiting anxiously, staring down at him. Where is Radharani? Radharani Khan, Kota Go Prema Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Like always at once, hear Krishna's flute song and leave all their moral principles and family members behind to run to Krishna and dance for us with them. Varaho Bhavati means that we secretly go to meet Krishna. Because they are, by Yoga Mai's arrangement, married with other coward men. Where's the Neil Mani, chapter 5? Ruga Swami described. Actually, the Gobis is the son of the Gobis. Worship Goddess Kalyani to get Krishna as her husband. They were accepted by Krishna and got out of marriage. They also grew up and got married, but Krishna married them first. <laughs> it's called a mock marriage. I give you a flower garden in the forest, you give me one, I'll give her marriage. That's, that's party. It's official. That's our marriage certificate. This garland's our marriage certificate. Now we're legal. <coughs> By Gandharva right. They were accepted by Krishna in Gandharva marriage, and thus they are his wife. All this marriage is unknown to their parents and Krishna's parents. And their amorous love is even more well hidden. Far more love, par kiyabhav. Making love to someone that belongs to someone else. Belonging to another, par kiya. All, this, all the secret lovers of Krishna worship, Ra, worship Radharani in their own way. Rahubali bhava bhavya. Every, every manja, every sagi worships Radharani with their own individual bhava. They're divided into four groups. There's Sapakshabhav, Vipakshabhav, Sri Pakshabhav, Tatasa Pakshabhav. 
the favor of one party, enemy party, friendly party, and neutral party. Some groups of Goes openly serve Radharani, others invisibly. <laughs> without Radharani, without Radha's lotus feet, the world of these psychics is dark and meaningless. Radha showers the nectar from her lotus feet into the hearts of her devotees. Bhaktanam Ritsaroji Madhura Rasa Sudha Sani Padaravinda. Oh, that's interesting. Here's another meaning to that phrase. Bhaktanam, he connects Bhaktanam to this phrase. Bhaktanam Ritsaroji Madhura Rasa Sudha Sandhi Padaravinda. So Rarani showers her manjaris and her sonica mandris with the nectar, waves of nectar, sweetness from her love of sea. Experienced devotees can feel that sweet nectar stream flowing towards their heart as they meditate on Rarani's love of the sea. That's to be felt, that's to be experienced. He's saying it. He's a guru of Raghavakti. He's a guru of Ma Manjri Babu Pasna, who's written the most, uh, most every other guru describes these subjects, bases his discussion on his books. Because he, he set, the, set the standard and opened the whole world to this Ross. Now that's what he. I've seen classes of other devotees and they're directly reading from his books, Gurus, Gurus, Gurus of Bodhisattva Daya, like we're doing. Experienced devotees can feel that sweet nectarine stream flowing towards the heart as they meditate on Rada's lotus feet. Means meditate on lotus feet, meditate on lotus form, meditate on lotus qualities, meditate on lotus leaves. It includes everything. If, if even Krishna meditates on Radha's lotus feet to taste his nectar, then undoubtedly the practicing, the sadhaka should also, uh, the sadhaka devotees of Radharani should do so. Who is, Chris, who is Krishna devotee of? Who is Krishna a devotee of? What's he meditating on? Radharani's lotus feet. So who are we devotees of? Radha and Krishna. And Krishna. <laughs> we went to Radha's seat first, and Krishna's seat second. That, that's the one. The phrase Amanda Prema Lakshmi means that Radhika is the Lakshmi of Sri Love. The Bhagya Devi, Bhagya Devi. I don't like this English translation. Bhagya Devi is Bhagya Devi, goddess of fortune. I don't buy it. I don't like it. Bhagya Devi. You don't know what it looks like. You don't know what it means. Look it up on Google. <laughs> Tell you Bhagya Devi. Not the reverential, respectful love. So Rani represents Madhurya Prem, not Aishwarya Prem. Who represents Aishwarya Mai Prem? Lakshmi. Lakshmi from? Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha. Narayana. Narayana, Narayana, Narayana. 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 Bhakti Devi has no, is not personified as a particular person. I never heard. I never read. You show me somewhere in Shastra? Yeah, doesn't say so in any way, just Yeah, okay, thank you. Confirmed. That would be strong, he said. <laughs> I'm, just, no, I, it's I'm just, just repeating what I heard from uh, Satyananda. Yeah, I'm repeating what I heard from my guru also. <laughs> I discussed with him. I did, we mentioned this point before several times. Thank you for reminding me. So, the Manjri concludes this verse and well, we're over time. Right. Five minutes, six minutes. Four or four. 
Okay, I'm almost done. <laughs> Thank you. Indian Standard Time. <laughs> yeah, IST. Indian Stretch Time. <laughs> may your mind pray much. May the gods of fortune and ecstatic love always be manifest in my heart, your heart, and everyone's heart. Jai, Jai, Jai.